Hey everybody, this is Nate from Original Freedom. If you're a fan of the show and want to hear more from Scott and Tom Spooner, including their transformational program, Crushing the Cage, check out Original Freedom Thrive at ogfree.com backslash thrive. Mic check, one, two. Tom, use your word. Hey, you. That's Original Freedom. Let's just skip straight to right now the really cool stuff, and that being the All Secure Foundation, right? What does it do? How can folks find you? What do you need? And really, I would give you know, I would ask you to make asks, right? If there's anybody out there, uh, for sure, we know we have folks that are interested in helping and giving back. So, um, talk to us about All Secure. Awesome. So, uh, when I met Tom and we did the first little video shoot that we had done. Um, I was asked if I wanted to go on to a ranger exercise and check it out. So I did, um, thought it was like the coolest shit. I'm like, Oh my God, I'm filming. And I've got Blackhawks. Like, you know, my hair's literally standing up on end and I'm like, Oh, this is like shooting a, you know, an action movie. Like I want to do this again. This is cool. So I did that again for the next four years. So, um, <laughs> I did that again for the next four years. Again and again. The next four years. Um, I was often one of the only females present for a couple of weeks at a time, sometimes, some, you know, maybe a week to three weeks. And um, it's part of my job. I got really good at being a fly on the wall. So the guys didn't really know I was there. They got comfortable. Um, and then they started talking like I wasn't there. And he's like, now you're seeing the real side of it. And I'm like, holy shit, this is so different. This is really alpha male culture that mm. it, and, and you know i studied anthropology and archaeology so it was fascinating for me so i didn't interject people are like how was it i'm like they didn't know i was there it was my job to make sure they didn't know i was there i was documenting training so uh, you with, were studying savages i yeah. was the <laughs> locals <laughs> primal. the primal <laughs> warriors yeah and it, i'm like you know it's not that different than 300 really but um <laughs> With some of the the things I would hear, I'd come back to him at night. I'm like, did you hear what he said about this, this, and that? And he's like, oh, my dear child, you're so naive. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. that's how guys talk. When girls aren't yeah. around, I'm like, but I'm around, which was a compliment. I'm glad they trust. forgot I was there and they trusted well, me. Well, it's not so much you forget. It's you, they trust or they don't. Trust me. Right. right. <laughs> trust me. They don't forget. They know who's sitting there. Right, right. And so over the years, um, it helped me because as a spouse – uh, girlfriend then spouse I didn't understand what was going on with Tom I didn't know anybody who'd been through combat trauma so um and, and nobody talked about it so I didn't know what was going on with him I didn't really understand it mm -hmm. I saw a Jekyll and Hyde personality and when he was good and happy he was great and fantastic and then I it was almost like the shark where his eyes would flip and he became so cold and so enveloped in this darkness that he became a completely and utterly different person. And I'm like, what do I do with this other person? I don't know how to manage this other person when this comes out. And if I'm feeling this way, I know other spouses have to be feeling this way. And so um, really it happened kind of on our last exercise. I quit after it. <laughs> I was 28 days with um, SEAL Team whatever, 10, I yeah. think, whatever. Um, spent a lot of time with them and – the guys started talking to me about what was going on at home. I'm going through another divorce. You know, can you talk to my wife? You know, what you guys are doing for Tom, and it seems to be working because he's not such an asshole anymore. <laughs> um, you know, he's really cleaned up his shit, so what is he doing? Um, and so I thought we should create a foundation that could become a resource for people like me who's trying to help their warrior heal. They don't know where to go. You know, um, you're all of a sudden required to be a therapist and a doctor and um, all of these roles as a spouse that no one's ever trained you for. And you don't know what to do. So it's extremely isolating. And um, when I started talking to other veteran wives, you know, he would take me to a unit formal or um, to an event because otherwise we don't associate with other military folk because sure. we live in St. Louis. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, just it's yeah. not a big special operation what you community. You, you go back. I mean, you know. It was ingrained still. You, you you go home. You go back home. Right? Yeah. I mean, it, but I started having women kind of take me aside and they're like, I can't really talk about this or I don't want to say it openly, but like I love what you're doing and what you're posting. 
Um, cause I feel the same way and I don't know what to do. Or can you help me get him help? I said, I can't do that for you, but I can show you the resources that are available to you. Um, and you're, you, you know, the thing we always say is you got to put in the work. Yeah. So, um, all secure foundation was born as a resource for spouses, for people going through whether it was substance abuse or want to get off the pills or want to retake, um, their health back through nutrition and supplementation or, whatever it could be. And then what we really started finding in the year that we were a resource for people, um, we had a contract with PJs and I asked the guys, okay, so, you know, they're like, Hey, with all secure foundation, um, what do you guys do? And I said, which one of these buckets? Cause we really, we could cover any of them. Um, and really we've narrowed it down. Do you want us to talk about health and wellness and how to kind of get back on track, you know, that way holistically, or do you want to talk about marriage and everybody at the table was like, Oh, I need to, like Hands I need, up. I need that one. And I was so surprised they all admitted it in front of each other too. Mm, and then one le- guy was like, my leadership style doesn't work at home in my marriage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like, I'm about ready to go for wife number two or three or whatever it was. Yeah. Young kids. I'm starting and so, to think it's me syndrome. You know, it's my third wife. Maybe it's me. I keep blaming all the women, but maybe it's me. I went through it. Oh, the constant. Yeah, the, the oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, I yeah. know, I'm man. I'm with you. Constant here, man. <laughs> it's one, it one must constant. Be me. <laughs> one constant between those four things. Yeah, it's you. Yep, been but there. It's still their fault, you know. <laughs> Guys don't want to. They want to recognize that or, or raise their hand and say, "Yeah, I'm screwed up." It's, it's you're not screwed up. You're you're going through what everybody goes through, you know. All right, so the foundation's born. And how's that going? Where's it out now? And what is the long-term vision? Like, give us the the BHAG. Okay. So the elevator pitch is that uh, we're moving towards supporting spouses, um, girlfriends, caregivers, whatever you want to say, whoever you're with, um, yeah. for the warrior. So supporting through workshop seminars. Um, so show up on a Friday, you leave on a Sunday, and we have hired Wanda Crawford. She was the JSOC uh, command social worker for 13 years. And she developed many programs um, and just wanted to move out of the box and start operating more creatively. And, you know, she had come up with these amazing ideas with mindfulness and, and vulnerability and courage and these things that have been proven to help, but she couldn't create that dialogue within. So she found us, we found her, we just brought her on as director of programming. She's coming up with some amazing programs. We're also talking about doing like a women's warrior weekend where we're uniting the spouses, um, closing that gap of isolation Mm. that we feel. Um, and, and the messages I've gotten have brought me to tears. Literally I lay in bed at night and he comes in the room and he's like, you're either reading Brene Brown or messages (laughs) from people. Um, but she'll make anybody cry. Just, um, bringing and addressing the war on the home front in a way that we're not only healing the warrior, but the warrior wife or the warrior caregiver spouse. You can't heal one without the other. You just can't. I mean, um, we've been trying. We've been helping veterans here, helping them there. Send a vet to Disneyland, which is, you know, great. That's another hell of a Yeah, maybe you don't own. do that. <laughs> yeah, but vacations are vacations. If you don't treat what's going on, it's just a vacation. And the wife's at home going, F you, man. You went off to war and I'm here raising the kids, paying the bills, got the house in line. Some of these guys go away for a year. And you come home, you're in the way. And they're like, oh, the veteran needs help. Yes, the veteran needs help. We've been doing yeah, that. Absolutely. But the families are still falling apart. Because you need you need somebody to help you. Everybody needs a support person. And that person close to you is your spouse. So get them the help because they're almost like, yeah, F you. The spouse well, is it's, going it's, it's, the I believe issues. it's you know easier to say the affected yeah. need help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, or the affected would be well served uh, to have help, right? right. And, and I, I put it in that way based off of some of the stuff that we've talked about even over the last couple of years, which is that interesting. We talked about a bottom. And, you know, <clears throat> Tom and I both, my family, my dad, you know, all being sober, you know, that's sober language. And really what I've come to find out is it's not sober language. It's, it's, um, change language, mm-hmm. right? Period. Sure. Yeah. It, it, Absolutely. It, for change to occur, a catalyst has to come in place, primarily pain and or massive pleasure. For most it's pain. For me, it's massive pain. And <laughs> until right. achieved, um, Good news is, is I run shit all the way to the ground. So at some point I can, I, I do turn it around. Um, and 
then boom, like you said, the awareness. Okay, cool. Now awareness is awesome. And for me, um, it's like, it's great to a point And as long as it relates to some sort of action. Right. right? And Absolutely. because that's key, because, you yeah. know, I, I used to uh, say I, I was a super aware I was an alcoholic when I was a young man. Like, I'm an alcoholic. Absolutely. Scotty, you're a drunk. You bet. Buy me another drink. That's awareness. I am. Right. So buy me a drink. What the fuck's that doing for me? Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah. awareness alone. Right. But yet we have to have it. And so I know everyone comes to, to this place of awareness. And then it was about doing work. Yeah, right. So sure. taking action. Um, and I know, Tom, you know, you've you've done a lot of work and you've also been willing to put yourself out there in a super emotionally vulnerable way, right? Doing the scary stuff. You've yeah. already proved you can do the dangerous <laughs> stuff. You're now you're doing the scary right. stuff, right? Which that's is actually that's the, exactly good way it's, to it's, it. it's, it's where, that's where real growth happens. That's fucking, it's, you know, that's yeah. the stuff that, um, people naturally often push against and that's okay. Right. Because I know, uh, for, for myself and I I can speak for Tom on this, right. It's all about sharing experience. Um, and it's meant to be received by those who are supposed to hear it. And, Mm -hmm. um, we'll know when that happens, maybe, uh, when it happens, maybe not, doesn't matter. Right. Uh, It's our job to deliver the message. Uh, if we're delivering a tool, make sure it's sound and be there. Um, if the phone, if when the phone Mm -hmm. rings, right. And other than that, like love people enough to let them go find bottom. Right. Yes. Um, yeah. And, and love them enough to, I know, for, you know I've, yeah. I've had a wife uh, crying on the other end of a line because what happens, I'm sure y'all have experienced that people, um, since Tom and I have been in that space philanthropically or, or however we are supportive. Um, well, Tom, obviously with, with a warrior's heart, very direct. But people want, uh, just like it did with alcoholism, mm-hmm. Come save, come save me, come save him, come save my husband, Um, come save my boyfriend, come save our family. Mm -hmm. And um, super heartbreaking when, um, like, one night this this poor lady was like, I'm like, hey, you need to call the cops. Yeah. And I'm talking about this other Green Beret um, who people be like, what the fuck was like? No, I'm no fool. Now help a brother out. Yeah, so no. I know. I know what he's capable of. Yeah, and exactly. I know that if I go, that you know what I mean. It's like it's bad, like the it's best thing, right? And and up. it's super. Um, it's heart. It's heartbreaking in those moments, and that is the reality, right, of what we're facing. Um, and you know, I can speak for myself and, 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 and knowing that it's always been about the willingness to do the next thing, uh, the willingness to try the next treatment, the neck, read the next book. Um, you name it. Um, once I have bottomed out yet again on this road of consistent progress mm-hmm. towards getting back, um, I don't want to say getting back in some ways it is a getting some emotions back, but it's really just operating successfully from an emotional standpoint after combat. Uh, um, well, you just <sighs> said it though, but, and I think that's really important. It's this, it's this process that it's not like, and people have said like, Oh, Tom looks better now. How did he cure his PTS? <laughs> cure so like, how is it all better now? Like, yeah. what did you do? And I'm like, oh, you got man, an app I hate for that. to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, went on, he went on iTunes. He just Google, just hit you this know, button. Hit veteran help. Yeah. It, it, we know that we're in the long haul of healing. Yeah. And that it's going to have ups and downs and highs and lows, and certainly it might have a whole lot more darkness in our future. Mm-hmm. And that's okay yeah. because I know that he's willing to put in the work. I'm willing to put in the work, and part of what. I'm starting to learn through this process is I can't save him every time. I can't try to fix every bit of pain. She was or, jumping up and down when you said love him enough to let him hit rock bottom. She was dying because it was like, I could tell. I could, I could well, feel it. Yeah, like, yeah, because I'm not allowing him to learn the lessons that he needs to learn. So if I keep trying to fix it for him and solve it for him, he's not going to the place he needs to go to to heal because I'm trying to you know, cut the pain off at the knees, but he mm. might have to go a little bit further. Couples don't um, like to do that because it's scary to be there. I get it. It's scary. You might lose someone, you know, I, terrifying to lose someone you love at the moment. You'll do anything to get them back. But do you really want to do that? 
do you want that person? You're going to go right back to doing what you're doing. You know, it's all about like, it's always awareness. And, and she just created that by owning up to what you're doing, being honest about it. You know, what you're saying and what you're doing are those two different things. I love my family. I love my family, but but you're deploying, you know, I love my family, but I'm going to lose my family if I do, but they're all choices. They're always all choices. You guys will say one thing and act differently while still saying the same thing. I don't want to lose my family, but what are you doing to get better? You're going to stop drinking. You're going to stop doing whatever's bothering you, whatever's bothering your family. People don't call us to tell us how good they have it. You know, no. <laughs> you hear those stories every day, you know, and, it, and it's and people are like, take care of yourself, take care of yourself because it adds up. It just weighs on you, but they're all so similar. It's almost like the same person on the, on the phone every time. It's this, it's this, it's this. And you know that you just know how to kind of talk about it. We don't diagnose or treat, you know, blah, sure. blah, blah. People are like, Oh, you're, you're going to get in trouble for that. We're just talking to people with our experiences. We're sharing our experiences yeah. and what yeah. works, you know? Sure. Everybody gets to choose what's right for them. And that's the sure. one thing that Tom and I have always stayed focused on. It's like, there is no way other than the way to get to the place you believe to be possible um, is there for you if you're willing to seek it and do the work, right? And mm -hmm. that's why it's always been an experience share. Um, you know, I've done everything from standard traditional meds to regular talk therapy to uh, accelerated resolution therapy with trauma memory processing, EMDR, trauma processing with stimulus, uh, ayahuasca ceremonies with shaman mm, and yeah. ancient medicine, um, sure. frog poison with ancient medicine. Um, what else? Um, and then surfing. Oh God, back in nature has been a big part of it. It <laughs> yeah, has, it right? Uh, getting back into nature, sure. surfing, snowboarding. And then the biggest thing so far, uh, as far as level of impact from a treatment perspective, um, that now I've gone through that, um, my brother's gone through and multiple other people. And now <clears throat> Tom's gone through a version of that. Um, has to do with the best way. I, I'm not a doctor, even though I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express <laughs> last night. Um, the way I can explain this is that uh, from my side, the treatment I went to is at a place called uh, BTC, Brain Treatment Center. Um, and there are multiple places uh, over the globe, but primarily in the U.S. on the West Coast. Uh, and have a L.A., a San Diego, and a Newport office. And um, the... The MERT, M-E-R-T, therapy was originally um, brought about and invented to help folks with autism. Um, and what they come to find out is that essentially a brain that is firing at different frequencies and different rates throughout the four main brain waves being alpha, beta, de uh, alpha, beta, theta, and delta correlates to how someone is taking in the world and functioning in the world and they've come to find out they use it to treat with uh, stroke patients to you know, autism stroke patients um hyper anxiety depression addiction ptsd and mild tbi probably a couple more uh and the reason is is it's very simple treatment in that they say this is what a healthy brain looks like, a good functioning brain looks like as it rates to the, those four waves on this range, frequency range from this hertz to this hertz, I think from like probably, you know, two up to about 11 or 12. And, um, and so it's simple. Boom, sit down, get an EEG, get a baseline, compare it, and start treatment, which is nothing more than 30 minutes a day, elect electromagnetic pulse therapy, and energy pulsated directly into the brain. And for me, I can explain it feeling like a, a tattoo needle going into the brain. And over time, desensitized, doesn't hurt that bad. And fast forward to a romance novel here personally in that, you know, after six weeks of, of treatment for me um, last year, uh, and that's 30, literally 30 minutes a day of that. So no drugs, no pharmaceuticals, nothing more than non-intrusive energetic movement. And then every two weeks reassessing brainwave harmonization, essentially, and then moving on. 
And throughout that process, uh, in six weeks time, what I got back, um, I'm still learning essentially what I'm, I got from it. But what I got back the most from uh, that I've described it as was mid range emotion, the ability to feel something other than through the roof or suicidal right or the darkest of the dark yeah or everything's great and um it was interesting because um i i i I felt as if and i feel like i didn't have context for how to even deal with stuff like that for me it was an emotional six weeks there was a there was days i cried um literally pretty uncontrollably um, my, my poor daughter, God bless her. She's, you know, in college, first year of college, <laughs> she's in the dorms one night and I'm out at treatment and I'm, I'm alone and I'm having a rough night and she FaceTimes me. And the next thing I know she was already having a bad night. And next thing you know, she's like, I'm fucking falling apart. And I'm like, but it's okay. I'm the treatment's going really good. It's okay. <laughs> Right. And I'm like, oh my God, this is horrible, Nate. But I'm sure has stories during the time. Yeah, this this progression because it's super intense, you know, mm-hmm. it's um um and but but really learning and then for me what it, it helped me deduce was like, okay, why? Why do why do I say I, I have mid range emotion and, and then it turned in I like to sol- I like to solve problems. It's like, okay, is there a theory? And I believe there is, and it's not, a th- I, I have a belief that, um, you know, whether, uh, you're in law enforcement, whether you're in military, any, I believe if you're fully committed in a job that requires you to play a, a legitimate life and death game and you truly become okay with it and then go play it, those who play it the best and those who win consistently mm-hmm. have to be able to do it unemotionally it also helped me make sense of why it's like i'm not innately uh mean i i'm not innately angry i'm not (laughs) yet i'm incapable of dealing with emotional turmoil or conflict so for me it wasn't i didn't do the angry angry route i shut down Mm. period because it's like if i can't just literally fucking rage and destroy you the way I want to because that's the only thing that's going to make me feel um, I'm just going to do nothing Mm -hmm. and so out I go right so that's affecting my like romantic relationships are you kidding me yeah you know it's romantic relationships have some turmoil well guess what I used to I used to make the statement like I can't do this and it was like that's such a fucking cop out it's like no finally what hit me is what that means is that it brings me so much emotional turmoil that I, I consistently think about killing myself. Yeah. That's exactly. what that means. And see, that's the other part I wasn't talking about. I wasn't saying that I consistently think about killing myself. I, I never did. I and, multiple ways. And also understanding the difference between being suicidal and having thoughts of suicide. Right. Yep. Yet either way, I didn't talk about it until the end, so to speak, right before I went out to brain treatment and uh, talking with a, a dear friend who just came back. And finally, I was, and I was like, hey, man, check it out. Like, all I know is um, my solution for every time I start getting anxiety is if I'm driving and I'm by myself is like, hey, can I pull over into this lane of traffic real quick? And, and that semi is there and odds are I'd be gone. He'd be fine. And no one will know or step out in front of a trolley in Toronto as I'm there and just like end it, end it, end it. And it's like, end what? It's like, it's not that I want to die. It's like in the fucking noise. <laughs> Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, and so for me, because there's no in between emotion, by the way, this mm-hmm. is just all me psychoanalyzing myself, which is I'm, I'm fucking good with because no one else knows me better than me. It's like, why, man? Why? Because I can look and I see this person who had all these thoughts. It's like, why? It's well, because I tried so many other things. Yeah. 
right? So al- uh, I didn't have, for me, alcohol wasn't an option because I got sober in 2002, even before going to war. So for me, it's like I tell people I had a full-time reality show, right? <laughs> um, like no <laughs> no breaks. I used to tell guys, I'm like, hey, fuck you, man. You at least get the Taiwan on. Even if you are blackout <laughs> drunk, at least you still get a break. It's like, shit. Right. So um, that process for me was interesting um, and even it didn't matter. So yeah. I really had to just like not, you know, it's like, no, I'm not going to feel that anymore. Can't. Um, and to have that back now <sighs> is the biggest gift I have been given. Um, and it's still difficult. And mm-hmm. when I finished six weeks of treatment, they're like, you're doing great. And we recommend six to eight more weeks, which is why I'm heading back out to do yeah. eight more weeks. Right. Um, and that, you know, journey, uh, the reason I highlight all of it is it's taken all of it. It's taken a willingness for me anyway, to read the books, check mm-hmm. out war in the soul, change yeah. your diet, uh, try horm- horm- hormone replacement. If your place where it's legal, freaking try medical marijuana. If you, whatever it is, like don't limit yourself to whatever someone has told you about anything. Go try it because you don't know when and where something is going to work. Um, and that's what, that has been my experience, therefore, and it's worked. So I share that that way. I think work. you have to be willing to try yeah. Over and over and over again to even the same thing. And like you have to, if he well, you stopped have to be, at the first therapist, he wouldn't have found his awesome therapist. It took four. And you have you to know? you have to be willing to believe it's possible to begin with before yeah. you're even gonna go see one therapist. Yeah. Or you right. have to believe that what it is I had to believe what it is I had wasn't the top of where I could be. Right. Because by the way, I didn't go to brain treatment center until after five years of other types of therapy. Like even after all that, I had hit a point of absolute frustration and the world I lived in was like, cool. My business is going great. I'm still living on the outside looking good. And it is. And I have a passion there. And that life of mine is different than who, you know, my other life. Like that's all real. And so is the realness that most times I love sitting at home alone. Um, I don't, you know, all these other things, right. They all coexist together. And, and, and I just figured like, stop fucking hiding it. Uh, Mm -hmm. cause it doesn't matter combat or no combat veteran or no veteran. I begin to find, especially in all my corporate work that there's people out there. It's the same shit, different place, different story. Their trauma is just different. Their trauma is just different. Their wound is just different. Their shame, uh, misplaced shame, misplaced grief, all that remorse is different. Right. So we have that common bond and the, Oh, by the way, as veterans, therefore we're not that different. (laughs) <laughs> is is there difference? Yes, but at the end of the day, the humanization piece as well, right? And 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 I love that aspect of tying that into the to the society piece. Um, so yeah, believing it's possible for one, uh, admitting your shit's fucked up for two, mm-hmm. <laughs> have a willingness to do some work, and then then a doggedness not to stop, right? To persevere, to continue to thrive throughout, win after win after win. And if you if you if you break that down, that's what every winner in the world does. They keep going. They break things down, and they follow the same process. They don't stop at one. They don't stop at one failure, one one mess up. They keep going. You just keep going. That's how you did. You know, you were a veteran. You were in how long? You know, you did a great job. You love it. You miss it. That's all you think about. It's like guys reliving that football football touchdown pass. You know, remember that day in that high school, that last game I threw that. That was their last great moment. You know. So they hold on to it, and it's their identity, and they're afraid to let it go, even though it's dragging them to the bottom. It's like my bag of gold is so heavy, it's dragging me to the bottom of the ocean. If I let go, I lose I lose all that. It becomes their identity. And when we talk to people and break down that, why are you keep falling back on that? You know, Guys that reach out on Facebook or, or any social media platform, um, that's it, I'm done with this. You know, Sadly, it's also be- become the spotlight. PTS is now the spotlight. So people that feel that way also like the attention. So they kind of clog the airways with, I, I have this and that. I'm like, well, really? What are you doing about it? Well, I just have it. You know, it's like, no, you have to do work. Like you've d- done everything else in your life that got you somewhere. It was effort. It required a lot of it was effort. effort. Yeah. 
If you just Why don't, should this you be any different? have to put it into this right now. You, you like the spotlight. You don't want to put in the effort for it because, what, the outcome's not worth it for you? You know? Your life being better is not worth it. I don't get hey, it. You know what's interesting that makes me, uh, it, it triggers a thought I had that the one time, every other time in the military, and I'll speak, for, uh, I'll, you know, this is my observation. All right. Um, based in experience in every other time there was change in the military, myself included, I believe, um, I did not talk about where I came from. No one else wanted to hear about where I came from. Right. So in the 82nd fucking show up there with what they don't want to hear about basic training stories, do they No. So leave the 82nd, get to SF. They don't want to hear about 80 second stories. You're SF now. Leave SF, go to SWIC. You rookie instructor now, Spooner. Don't fucking hear about that. You don't know what you're doing here yet. Leave there. Fucking go to the unit. For God's sakes, we definitely don't want to hear about fucking any, anything. We don't even want to hear about your mama's stories. Right? And because, like, it's on a daily basis. And then the irony of the fact that then after that, it's like, why wouldn't I say, hey, I'm a fucking civilian now. I don't know one of you, nobody for the most part. I don't mm -hmm. want to hear what the fuck I did. And vice versa. It's just literally maintaining the same mentality at this final transition yep. point. Yet it's it's super drastic. And the willingness, not, I, I mean, the willingness to reinvent oneself again the way I was willing to all those other times. Start fresh, by the way. No one fucking got to buy any of those places. Right. Um, yeah, out here, it's like, why should it be any different if it's going to be worthwhile? For me, if I figured it out, it's like, why, why, why is it going to be any different? If it's going to be worthwhile, it's going to be different than what I had, which is what I want. Right. Um, it's going right. to be hard. Right. It is hard to reinvent yourself. It's critical, though, and it not only for veterans, but for anyone who wants to grow or change, you know, to really look at what's working in your life and what's not look, working in your life and then to actually figure out, how, OK, this isn't working. I don't feel authentic. And there's nothing worse for me than feeling inauthentic when I don't feel like I'm <laughs> in a place of belonging with my people, my tribe, um, or when I feel like just I'm not comfortable in my own skin. It's a bad place. And so reinvent, you have to reinvent at that time, you know, and, and people are afraid of that because it's so much change, but it's growth. It just looks different. And you have to try a lot of different things. You know, like I said, tr I love transcendental meditation. It worked for me. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't, it wasn't working for him as much. So it was like, okay, well, let's pause, try something else. And we could come back to that again, because now that you're doing, um, it might work now. TMS. Better, yeah. <laughs> now a different part of your brain's activated and your biology is changing. So it might work again. Let's try it. What does it hurt? It doesn't. It doesn't. It's just effort and time. People will tell you they're afraid of change. And I, I tell them if you don't do anything because you're afraid of change, you'll wither, which is change. If you control the change and you try to be better, then you're still going to change, but it'll be in a better direction. But you're, you're always going to change. You're going to wither and die, which is change, or you're going to grow. Yeah, we don't you know? stop. Right. Right. Everything's energy. Never stops moving. Exactly. That's right. That's it. So real quick, though, what was your, you're still, you're just finishing up a, a six-week process? Uh, was it? No, it was, um, 36 sessions, so it was over 10 weeks. Oh, um, wow. 36. Weeks, okay. 36 sessions. Yeah, and I've got, I got one tomorrow when we land, so I got two this week. Uh, last week, last two weeks were three and three. It's five days a week, but previous, and they taper off. And we've noticed that when I would do a long weekend, you have to do a minimum of three a week or they won't even take you. Five is what they want. I had to travel a little bit. So it's like, okay, we'll go on a Friday. We'll leave right after treatment. Then when we get back on a Wednesday, yeah. we'll do it in the morning. You know, got to get them in. I noticed, she, well, okay, she noticed. <laughs> after a four-day stretch of not having it, I, I woke up different. Yeah, he did. Like straight up aggressive, irritable, just, you know, he was an happy camper. And I, so I noticed it the first time. And then when there was another four day stretch, he woke up in that pattern started again. I'm like, oh, I recognize this. And so, so thus the taper, you know, that's why they're tapering off three, three for a week, three for a week, two for a week, two for a week. And then 
it's like any, I guess it's like a drug. Your drugs do, you know. Yeah, but what it, can you body. explain what what it is they're doing? Um, with the tapering? No, with the, the treatment. Oh, with the treatment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> so uh, TMS, there's actually, if you Google it, there's facilities across the country. Primarily, these are East Coast. Um, I think St. Louis might be the furthest south. Um, it's Greenbrook is one. Right, but really, I mean, you can Google it and what find out. What does TMS name stand it? for? Um, transcranial magnetic stimulation. Yes. Okay. So there you go. It Magnets is, turn uh, electricity inside your brain. You know, like you said, when you when you got yours, is a tapping. I feel like mine's it shifts depending on where the hat is on your head, but it feels like it's pulling my teeth up. It's like a muscle <laughs> contraction. Yeah. And sometimes it's, you don't want to get your tongue in between your teeth when it happens. <laughs> you know, and, and your right hand will depending on how how it's adjusted on your head you know we'll start to twitch so you can't really mm -hmm. do much with that every every 20 seconds it hits you for 10 seconds you know for 20 minutes but yeah they've identified basically with tms okay here's the part of the um, frontal lobe that is um, dealing with depression mm. and um, so this primarily is for people uh, with major depressive disorders anxiety. also anxiety um, and they're going into drug addiction now with us. Yeah, yeah. That's in the different area yeah. of the brain. So where he's being targeted, what's approved through these facilities is working on that depression and anxiety piece. So again, mm -hmm. this is a piece of his puzzle for healing, sure. not the entirety of yeah. it. Um, we still have to deal with the other parts of PTS that show up, but his, um, his depression, again, those suicidal thoughts that terrify a spouse. And yeah. I'm, I'm grateful that, we have the kind of relationship where he was able to tell me, mm -hmm. um, you know, like I, I think about it. Okay, well, how much? Like a hundred times a day. I'm yeah. like, are you <laughs> freaking kidding oh, me? Yeah. Weird shit. And like it, popcorn. Yeah. yeah. Like, like having this. chips. It, and it's the way his brain's firing. Yeah. You know, it, it's just yeah. it. Yeah. It's My like brother, you, you know, uh, uh, you know, Tom says it best. Um, I well, he says it a great way. It's a descriptive way. It's a hell of a way to say it when he talks about a, a time that he was dealing with, you know, it's like, okay, yeah. He's like, I know what bullets do to brains. It's like, I, it's, he's like, it's not that I truly would want to like leave here, but I know what this does to that and it'll make that go away. And I know that, right? It's like, boom, that's pretty definitive. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. You know the outcome. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, just like Tom and mm -hmm. I, I wasn't talking about it. And then it's like, okay, no, there's a lot of, you know, no, it's pretty, pretty common. And it's like, okay, not resting in that moment. Like, okay, I fucking see, I'm good. I'm not, I'm, I'm right. good. It's like, no, it's okay. It's okay that I have that. And if yes. we can, we need to, I want to change it. Yep. And the way I, like, this is how people say, well, what's different after, you know, time at brain treatment? Because what's cool, I think, is you're doing a different form of mm -hmm. what I'm doing. We're both having good positive results, right? right? And that's the other message is making sure it's like, hey, think outside the box. Look for other things. Um, don't knock it till you tried it. Um, belief systems are limiting. Don't let that get in the way of, <laughs> of, of getting right. a better life. Um, because like for me, I'm measured in a few things. One is thoughts of suicide decrease by 60 to 70%, right? Massive for me. Yeah. And when I have them now, because I still do, it's more so of like, there's a follow-up thought say, like, Hey, that's no, that's, that's not a, that's not a solution. It, it, like, we're, that's not cool. Like right. there's other ways mm -hmm. back to other emotions. There's other ways, right? The mid range. Yeah. Um, he had that come back to you when you talked about that. You know, I, and another thing I really want to share right now, because I, I spent a lot of time not talking about it, no different than I did with the suicide and thoughts of peace. Um, Cause I was, I would try one time I even told somebody, it's like, look, man, I've been suicidal. I've had a pistol. I've like, I've been close. I knew what that means. I was like, versus these are just thoughts. And I thought this person would be able to handle this. And guess what? <laughs> like never should have fucking told them. Mm. Cause now they got me on suicide watch and I'm <laughs> regretting never telling them. And I'm like, yeah. okay, you can never yeah. tell anyone that again. And so now to have that pretty, you know, pretty well gone, um, and the other thing was a symptom that, that came up for me. It started about four years ago um, was 
anytime I was on something high, mm. like building um, hot air balloon, like whatever, right? And I jumped out of plane since I was 18, I was free fall guy, tandem guy, like doesn't matter yet. Uh, deathly afraid of heights. That's the irony there. But about five years ago, four or five years ago, anytime I was on something high, uh, I wanted to jump off of it. Oh my God, we talk about that. Okay, but it wasn't <laughs> because jump. it wasn't because, and, and the only thing I could tell you at the time was it wasn't because I wanted to die. Right. It was because I just wanted to fucking fly. I just wanted, and so in hindsight, let me, you know, re- reel everybody in real quick. It's like I wanted to feel. Yeah. Um, I wanted to yeah. feel, I knew what the payment was and it wasn't so much as I want to die. It was like at some point, And for me, it wasn't even a thought. It was a compulsion. Mm-hmm. I, I was, I was on a hot air balloon ride one time and this is when it really, the first time it really hit me. And I got to the center and I got down and I was having the worst panic attack I had probably ever had in my life to the point. And then people were like, kind of starting to make fun. Like, Oh, big green beret, yeah. really tough guy. And this one, I was like, hey, man, do not fuck with me right now, all right? And he's like, okay. <laughs> and um, and then I was just literally breathing through it. And at one point, I thought I was going to have to tell one of them, like, hey, man, just, just grab me and hold me. Um, because I, it was like a compulsive, like, I'm fucking going. And it never stopped after that, like, at, at a hotel, this and that. And... Um, I had shared it with someone else and now really, you know, after brain treatment, that was another big thing that just got quiet, went away and was like, holy shit. So I didn't like these symptoms that were going away. I picked them up like these little nuggets throughout the six weeks for me. And even now, or Tom or Nate or someone will recognize it in me. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Tom and I got kicked out of Canada, deported out of Canada. That's a whole other podcast <laughs> a while back. Um, and throughout that process, you know, I was kind of the, the point, the uh, lead on it. So I was dealing with it and Tom was like, oh, damn, that was impressive. Uh, emotional <laughs> constraint and behavior. And I, did, and I was like, yeah, fuck, proud of myself. Cool. Yeah. You know, um, and even, you know, uh, other relationships. So the, these things, right, and these things, um, I've gone back and been able to uh, apologize to my kids. Um, not because I have shame, yet looking back over the years uh, since 2005 and knowing they went through a tough divorce and knowing they still go through a lot, knowing that they lost loved ones that were our friends, like all that shit. And then realizing through gaining this mid-range emotion and allowing myself to feel, seeing how unempathetic I have been mm-hmm. for the last... <laughs> 14 years whatever right um how not present i was in people's lives who i cared about not giving myself a get out of jail free card here and i will tell you i understand why i wasn't and it was because they came my pain level fucking maxed i'm here I'm everything I got to hold it together. And I, for me, I, I hang my hat on providing. Like, I perform. I carry the mail. Fucking, I got y'all. Yeah. I'm super supportive. Like, this was probably, uh, not probably, I'm sure it was my speech to my kids. Like, hey, I know divorce sucks. I know this is miserable. I love you very much. I'm sorry for this pain. We're all going to get through it. I got you. You with me? Like, we need to. Um, yeah. And, of course, right. they're like, of course, that I'm like, awesome. I love you. you. I know this sucks. And, like, but never once did I go, you're in a fucking ton of pain. I am the source of that. These are facts. And I can't fucking feel pain for you because that means I hurt you. And if I hurt you, then odds are I'm going to yeah i probably will off myself so we're just gonna kind of keep it the way it is right now yeah and in one moment like crushed and in the next moment like fucking crying because i was happy that like wow cool best thing i could do was come home and sit them both down and and do just what i did like i'm sorry and here's why 
and it, it was wrong. And this is why moving forward, like, not happening. It's powerful. Like that's that is like healing. That's gift, mm -hmm. and um, and it's why I'm going back. Right. It's the one thing that is proofed yeah. out to can you know to progress to a point. And for me, the uh, on the merch side and with the brand treatment center, once I hit a point where it's like, hey, plateau. Uh, you know, we're not getting any gains anymore. It's like, okay, that's where you are. Good news is, is I still had room for improvement yeah. last year. So yeah. that's why, you know, uh, going back in. So, you know, I it, when, when I got back, that's why I, you know, I picked up the phone. You're one of the you know, first people I called or even during the process, I think. You yeah. Know? Yeah, for sure. But, and uh, she, she latched on to it like a champ. <laughs> it's like, I don't think I can get out to L.A. for I just, you know, I can't for six weeks. And then to take her and the kids be like, what are you leaving us here for? And, and she started Googling and looking, and, and I mean, it was that easy. And just put in a little bit of effort. And I'm like, this I don't whole like thing it's not I never an option. Yeah. I don't like those words because I'm like, mm, we can figure this out. It worked for Scott. This is the earth, man. Worked There's for Tom. something on this earth. There's something on this planet that will save us. You just got to find it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Relentless in the pursuit of healing. Yeah. yeah. You have to be. Yeah. Relentless effort yeah. in the pursuit of healing. Mm -hmm. right because it, it, it never, you know for me Absolutely. anyway it doesn't stop because i'm gonna you know um yeah the biggest thing you know i think that i would present that came out of tom's story my story your story your story as a spouse right all of these stories include like a ended up in a situation um of being a human that wasn't in alignment with who I either thought I wanted to be, knew I could be, or knew I was blatantly fucking lying about being. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Right. And then, you know, <laughs> enough pain in place to create that willingness and desire to seek out help and to do so until found as it relates to whatever, yeah. right? Be it uh, if you the spiritual route, the medicinal route, the non-traditional route, the ancient route. The fuck? I don't give a shit. We're all different, like, right? Just, just get after it, right? Yeah. And that's my thing. It's like, man, I don't really, you know, what anyone else does anymore. It's like, awesome. The only thing I offer is my experience. And I know what willingness looks like, and I know what it doesn't. And so in all things in life, people that are willing to do work get rewarded, you that's know? True. And so... It's not it, always apparent huh? <laughs> so quickly. Sometimes it comes to you a little later, that reward, like realizing it. Because well, sometimes you, you go know, through it and you're like, what am I doing all this for? And fear limits everybody in what they it do, you know? It comes back around. Sometimes in really unexpected ways, like the foundation. If you would have asked me 10 years ago, <laughs> would I, oh, yeah. Yeah, you're going to go in bed with some like green berries and seals for a few years and then start a nonprofit. I would have been like, you're out of your freaking mind. There's no way. <laughs> I don't know anything Never. about that. Yeah, yeah savages. Never. <laughs> if I wouldn't associate with such savages. Such savages. No, but um, <laughs> really for me as an impasse showing up, I was like, there's a lot of pain around here. There's a lot of freaking pain. Nobody's talking about it. Everybody's got these masks on. Yeah. And I understand why they're there. Yeah. It's for survival. And you start to see that. Um, and acceptance, I would say. You're afraid to be different. And to be different, you'd have to say, I, I, I'm not a, I'm not fake and playing strong anymore. I, I need help. And I'm not weak for it, but I need some help. So being different and, yeah. being, able, and being able to face mm -hmm. that you're different, get yeah. the first people on the dance floor, and then everybody comes in. You know? they, they've, do, they've done experiments, you know, play music, nobody dances. Oh, yeah. Everybody's looking around, and one guy yeah. gets out there, and then, and then two, and then everyone's out there. Yeah. People are afraid to be indifferent or the first one or the only one. So that one, it takes one. There's proof it just takes one to get out there and start flailing your arms about and not caring to get a couple out there to follow you. To actually, there's, to actually, follow there's actually proof that backs up one actually sometimes keeps, turns into one, right? It's fucking the, the follower. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one. Yep. That's zero. That's right. point zero one, right? <laughs> and one shows up, boom, right? Now we have... 
oh, boom, acceptability, right? Yeah. Now it's believable. Yeah. Now it's doable, all these things. Yet the stuff we're talking about, the type of work we're talking about, emotional work and introspective work and, 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 and responsible uh, work requires a different brand of courage. Um, it's not oh, yeah. one, it's not one, it's not a, it's not a, a courage need, uh, in battle in a fist fight, a gun fight, any of that. No. It's, um, whenever you have something that the gateway, uh, the gatekeeper mm-hmm. of all growth potential back into who we are able of being after these yeah. things happen, the gatekeeper is emotional vulnerability. Oh, heck yeah. (laughs) Which is the absolute diametrically opposed, you know, response or, or, you know, any of like what? Yeah. Emotionally vulnerable. Um, So that piece and and through to me is just demonstration over and over again. It's like it doesn't equal weakness. It actually equals strength and strength and courage, right? Yeah. And it requires courage, right? To say for me, when Tom and I, I'll speak for Tom, when we did the NRA special, when we came out that said, hey, we got, we have PTSD, TBI, take meds, we do this, yeah. all this, that, and the other things. It's like, so what? And, <laughs> right? Um, right. And so really seeing that as more mainstream, watching a guy that I knew um, during a time, and Tom and I have laughed about it, and he knows, like, I fucking couldn't stand him. Yeah. Right? Um, Not (laughs) many could. Yeah. I mean, and he was my boss. You know, I was like, no, you're a dick. Um, And... I, yeah. It's weird. I now actually have empathy for for your generation, and, and all all kidding aside, that y'all went, you know, really, especially Mogadishu crew, um, like y'all were carrying that stuff long before I showed up, and a lot of us showed up, right, and then started this next just because there was a joke, right? As they came, what the fuck? You got to be bipolar to be a CSM <laughs> around here, <laughs> yeah. you know? And um, and it's really okay. So now I get it. Bipolar. I just talked about why. Nothing right. but highs and lows left. Y'all gave that shit up years before, yeah. right? So it began to uh, to to unravel. The, it's not a riddle, right? It's not a riddle, right? And that's the cool thing now about folks like y'all who are speaking out, and Tom with Warrior's Heart, yeah, absolutely. and All Secure, and all these other great you know avenues that are highlighting all aspects around the problem and the solution, right? And I would ask for you to, you know, throw any last words of thoughts, of wisdom, hope, in and around what y'all are doing at All Secure, um, in and around what you think folks need to hear in order to whether if they want help themselves and or able to provide information to help those they love. I would like to share that it's, we talked about this yesterday or earlier. I don't even remember anymore, but you don't, you're not saved by your rank or or the level of job that you have. We all go home to our spouses and we have to deal with home life. Whether you're a four-star general, the CEO of Coca-Cola, you know, or just the guy at the gas station, when you're at work, that's where you can, you're in those lines between the yellow lines. You know, you're at work, you've got rules to follow. So when you go home, there's no rules. You're winging it every night in a relationship, you know? So, you're, everyone's affected with, 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 with depression and issues at work. And it's okay to admit it because you're really not the only one. There's so many people that won't reach out because they feel they're the only one. Leadership tries to hide it. You know, we're strong. You were talking about vulnerability. I mean, can you do anything courageous and be brave without first being vulnerable? You have to go in there and take a chance that you're going to fail, right? Because you can never know. There's, you, nothing's 100%. So you, instantly the first thing you're going to be is vulnerable. So we've always talked about this language and words and how we, and what do they mean to other people and what do they mean to you. you know. And I literally learned that from you when we first got back together. And different definitions of words and, and the correct definition versus what I think it means. So when I talk to you about leadership or management or to be a leader, to be a manager, oh, there's different things, are they? Are we saying the same language? So... When people realize that they're not that different, you know, 
go out there and get help from guys that, that have been through it. Yeah. And hey, you're miserable. You're unhappy. What what else can happen other than going up? Like really, <laughs> you know, like some of the people I talk to, it's just you have to get through the drama and the bitching of it where you're like, OK, let's break this down. It sounds like you're awful comfortable in this miserable hellhole that you're in right yeah. now because you're not willing to Google TMS in my area. You're not even willing to do the most basic work to yeah. show up for yourself. Yeah. When you're ready to show up for yourself, your life will change and it mm-hmm. will get better because you're doing things. And, and it might take a couple of different, hey, I'm going to try TMS or I'm going to go out to California or I'm going to go, um, you know, Time for a Hero now is providing um, stem cell stem cell and they're also yeah. have just added a i don't want to speak for them because i might have this wrong but i believe they're starting to add the treatment that you did so they're working with that facility out okay. in california as well okay so they've added that as part of what they're offering there's so much help and you just have to look for it and it's there and what it looks like to you it might be surfing i know some guys who get on paddle boards or surfing <laughs> yeah or, Hiking or, music, or whatever it art, is, music, yeah. arts, like don't be afraid to explore what sets your soul on fire because that's the thing that's going to heal you. And what healed me and my trauma was completely different than what healed Tom and yeah. his trauma. And it 100%. came from very different places, but also we're very different human beings. And so what worked <laughs> for me and I'm like, oh, you should try to, you know, this, 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 and this, cause this is working for me sure. and isn't this great. And he's like, I'm not really feeling it. And at first you're like, oh, okay, well you know, that didn't work. And, and now what? And, and just relaxing into healing as and well. And be honest, people want a cure. People want to feel better. So they're going to start, oh yeah, that's working for me. I want to try this and that. All right. But sometimes you that's know, all hey, you need not to working, get started. Move on quickly, you know, give it the prescribed amount of time and then move on to something else. Quitting. I, I can guarantee if people never quit, they'll always keep getting better and moving forward. You know, as soon as you quit, that's it. You guys give up on their treatments. They give up on trying. I'm, I'm sick of trying. Whether Me you've too. accepted where you're at right now. <laughs> right. There well, are I mean, days where it's really well, hard. I think one thing I like to point out is like in making sure for me anyway, it's like totally, uh, you know, been out long enough and it's like I'm totally unemotional anymore when, when it's like uh, simple questions. It's like, hey, yeah, oh, I'm tired of trying. It's like, okay, is that true? Yeah. So do you, do you want any help? No. Okay, cool, man. I love you, brother. I hope you make it through it. You know where I'm at. And turn and walk away. Yep. I mean, literally, it's like trying. It's impossible because the requirement of belief in something better than what it is requires so (laughs) much effort that absent that effort, absent desire, it turns into the awareness without action. Yeah. Period. Absolutely. Which actually makes it worse because then these same people at times then really go motherfuck me. And, you know, <laughs> which is fine as well. And I still keep, you know, it's like, hey, like the days are over as well. Like I don't need to fight back anymore. I don't need, I, I've learned that if I have to defend anything, I don't have a belief, I have an opinion. And if I'm just carrying an opinion in my life, I need to go do some more research. Yeah. For me to keep myself in check. It's like, man, I don't really care. Or, I, you know, as long as you're not fucking with me or my people, like, do, do your thing, man. Or, like, the greater good. Um, so, it's awesome to know that y'all continue to preach it, live it, spread it, show it in a vulnerable way, expose your ups and downs. I want to give you massive, massive amounts of open and just verbal uh, respect uh, to both of you for your willingness to throw your shit out there um, knowing you will be judged, are judged, and head high, through and through, high integrity, and are just continuing to inspire folks out there to get on board helping uh, our veterans heal um, in every way possible. Um, on behalf of Tom, myself, Nate, everyone in the Original Freedom team, it's been an honor to have you all here on the podcast. Please check out anything Tom and Jen Satterley are into. All Secure Foundation can be found on Instagram. Can you Facebook, throw some, throw your sure. handles out there? Yeah, so you can find us. We're all attached online too. So if you go to allsecurefoundation.org, uh, all of our social tabs are there. If that's just easier for you to navigate that way. Also Virago, which is a new initiative we just started to support uh, women supporting each other. 
who are feeling isolated through helping their warriors heal. So both platforms, they're online. Um, we're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. We're everywhere. We're, 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 everywhere. <laughs> we're everywhere. We're everywhere. We're everywhere. We're not on Snapchat yet. But I know. I was going to say. Kids don't like right? us fishing around there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's where you can find them. You can find us on Instagram at BOG Free, on Facebook, Original Freedom, YouTube, the Original Freedom Podcast. Please, if you would, go to the iTunes store and write us a review, please. Tell us what you think about what we do here on the Original Freedom Podcast and how well we are or not doing it. As you move into the rest of the afternoon, night, day, morning, wherever you are, do so knowing that you are the creator of all that is possible in your life and you can't have any of it unless you own all of it. Goodbye. <laughs>